What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Blood on the Razor Wire TV, where we bring it to you real and we bring it to you raw. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share the video. Got a good one today, man. Um, bringing up a dude that's on, he's a Paisa, right? I spent a lot of time in federal prison. That's right. Friends with a lot of Paisas over there. Played soccer with a bunch of them dudes. I mentioned that on the on the channel sometimes. He's friends with a lot of South Siders, but anyway, man, this dude was gonna bring a different perspective, man. And I think it's something that we need to hear, something that we should talk about, because these dudes are a major influence in federal prison. I've been on yards with Paisas where there's five, six hundred of these dudes. And I can tell you in every prison that I've been to, some dudes talk shit about Paisas sometimes, but when something happens, my experience, every single one of them goes. I don't care if they're 70 years old. They're out there throwing rocks, bocce balls, punching, kicking, whatever has to be done. These guys get it done. So that's why I'm bringing this brother on. Tell them who you are, brother. Tell them where you're from and talk a little bit about you. All right, man. What's up? First of all, appreciate you letting me tell my experience here on the show. Good morning to you. Good morning to everybody on Blood, in, Blood on the Razor Wild TV. Hit that like button, subscribe. My name is uh, Tony. My channel name, Paisa16, time is murder, come kill time, not people. That's what I tell people on my channel. I talk about prison stories, prison experience. As people that have been following me already know, I did only two years on a non-violent for a fake green card. See, I'm, I'm, a, I'm straight Paisa. I was an illegal immigrant in the States, and that's what I got in trouble for. And I ended up going to a maximum security prison. I... At age 19, I turned 20 in there. I, I discharged when I was 21. And I saw a lot of things, man. There was three riots while I was in there. And also, we were talking before this, this interview started. I was going to tell you that the, the whites that didn't let them shower, they, I was in building two. They had nothing but confirmed gang members there. And since there wasn't a strong presence of the Aryan Brotherhood or none of those gangs that look out for the white race, then the other gang, the other race gangs would um, take advantage of that. And they put this rule that was, I thought in my opinion, it was a, it was a messed up rule because they said that no whites were allowed on the showers, but there was six showers, three on one side, three on the other. And since they had said, when I got there, they said, they told me, uh, well, I do remember one, one white dude, he was bald, all tatted up. He came in there and he said he basically he fought for his right to, to be able to use the showers and he didn't check in or nothing. Um, other other dudes that would go in there, they maybe they were lone wolves at, at first and all that. Because um, Paisas, well, in Texas, Paisas ride with tangos. Um, I, I know that in the feds, they're just called Paisas. It's a Paisa oh, Alliance. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to stop you, man. So you're telling me that the white dudes were not allowed to take a shower, bro? Are you serious? I know it's I know it's uh, I seen Tango Blast call out white dudes, tell them to get out of the shower. Because they like, and then there was this one dude that I used to talk to, and he ended up like checking in for that for that reason. It was a messed up rule because there was three showers on one side. They said that when I got there, they told me this one's for the Mexicans. And this side's blacks. So I didn't even bother to ask what about the white dudes because I was I was good. I was a Mexican. All right, I was shot. I'm a shower there. And then later on I, I, I started finding out about that messed up rule. Um but like I said, later on I saw like a straight or uh, a stiff white dude. I think very good. He I saw him in there and then it was kind of it was not it was kind of funny because my, my Paisa homeboy. So he was the he, he was the one that told me because I seen I seen no white um, tying up his, his shoes and she was getting to fight and and I the Paisa, the my Paisa older homeboy he told me yep he's gonna he's gonna fight for to be able to use the showers. <laughs> tell you this right, right dude, though. when you're in prison. Oh, and, and check this out, check this out. After that, after that, they started letting like. Like he fought for also I seen more white dudes being like going in the showers. So he kinda he kinda owned that like he started breaking that they would shower on the Mexican side. We we had three showers here and three showers on, on the blacks. They would shower with us, with the Mexicans. And also they would shower mostly on the Paisas, where the Paisas would shower. 
because there was three showers and Tango Blast would like call, they would they would say like they would own one or almost one or two. They wanted to own all showers, but basically we kind of chose one of those three showers and and I remember I, I kind of felt bad because there was there was this white dude that was just like me, like he was young. Like like I said, I was 19, but I I was lucky for that I was Mexican and I was Tango Paisa. But this dude, he was just like me, you know. And then uh, he he would add, he want to ask me permission to shower, to for, to use the showers. And at the same time, I, I wanted to say, of course, man, like that's what the showers are for. Who are we to say that you're not gonna be able to shower this and that? But at the same time, I didn't want to be responsible later on. Somebody gonna call me out and say, why are you doing this? You know what I'm saying? But that's why I, I mean. I would say, okay, yeah, go in and shower, go in and shower. But I would like quickly get out of, get off that situation. That way, I want to get called out for that. Let me and ask you something though. Let me let me, let me make a statement. That right? maximum security prison. You gotta listen to me, too, a, man. Listen to me for a minute. What's up? I never been in a prison where dudes didn't want people to shower. I don't want to smell you, bro. It's hot out. It's Texas, and you're gonna tell yeah. people they can't shower, man. man that's, Texas that's absolutely Texas outrageous. Don't got no you said no yeah they i guess they wanted like they wanted to keep that area where it was just whites and blacks because it, it was constant racial segregation and uh i mean like constant racial how you call it like tension because also in building one whenever a white dude would get sent over there building one was for g4 status whenever you got in trouble you got sent there that's how i got to that prison because when I was in the transfer unit, catching ca out of place cases and fighting, I was being a, uh, I was trying to, I was, how you say it, uh, a rascal. I got, I got sent to the maximum security prison and I, I got, I arrived on building one. And I remember that one of the rides that happened while I was in there was between the whites and the blacks in building one. Also another ride that happened because these three rides happened in that prison while I was there. I want to hold on, man. Hold on, hold on, because I want to talk a little bit more about. kind of small. I want to talk a little bit more about the shower. I think you're not hearing me right away because we're delayed. You're in Mexico. I'm in New York. But this is the deal, right? Dudes are telling dudes they can't shower, and this is supposed to be a unit for people that are bad, that like done bad things. So these dudes are coming in there, and and, and they're not showering. It sounds like they're a bunch of punks. Because truthfully, I'm not the baddest man on the planet, but I'd rather come in there. We're gonna fight, and I'm just gonna get moved. That's all. And I'm going to, yeah. whatever, man, we're going to group up the people and we're going to get it in. Because yeah. if we can't shower, then we ain't staying here. That's it. That shit makes me mad, bro. That I never heard nothing like that before. And for dudes to just go in there and be like, yeah, man, treating people like they're bitches, bro. And I, I don't like that at all. But anyway, so this white dude ends up fighting. What are the other white dudes doing when he ends up fighting for the shower? Do they do anything? I mean, like, the they they said, this is Mexicans, this is blacks. And the the other white dudes that were there before that that Aryan Brotherhood got there, they would shower like during chow time when they would shower on the Mexican side whenever the Mexicans were on chow time or whatever. Whenever like you know there was nobody on the on the on the wing on the tank or whatever the pot, and like they would get their chances in there before that white dude got there and fought for you know he said now nah, we're not having that he fought for his right to shower and that's when they started letting more like they, you know they, they had to respect that win or lose did he win the fight did he fight more than one dude how many dudes did he have to fight for the shower man i guess he just fought i don't know how many i didn't, that, that's one thing about me like when i was in prison i, I would uh, i would know that they were fighting and but especially if it was another race I didn't keep up with uh, how many, who they did it. Who, it. It's good to know because you got to know how people fight in case one one day you got to fight them. But I don't know how many people he fought. I, I just remember seeing him tie his shoes up and Paisa told me, yep, he's, he's going to fight for his right to shower. Uh, okay. And that's it. I never investigated any more about it. I, I lived in a cell. When I was in that wing, at first, I had a black cellmate. He was a crip. And then later on, I got moved with a paisa. Because at first, my, the GI, 
he had seen my Made in Mexico Eagle, but the Pisces had gave me permission to say that I didn't run with nobody so that I wouldn't have to sign confirmation gang that I was affiliated with nobody. Because, you know, that affects sometimes whatever the case. So, but later on, they kind of found out because they seen me hang with the Pisces, I guess. And I got moved. And uh, and I, I remember I did want him to get moved with Shaggy. He was a Pisces from Dallas. Um, well, he lived in Dallas, but he was from like uh, San Luis, is like a part of Mexico. I don't really remember. He had a 12 year sentence. But yeah, the, the three riders that I was talking, I was going to tell you about, they didn't happen in my wing, in my pod. Like I didn't see them, but I knew I heard about them because they happened in that prison. Um, it was one of the, I don't know if um, you want me to talk about those two, like, Oh, also, when I seen the crib get sta- get slashed in the face, get Hold stabbed on. in the I'm face. Gonna, I, I'm going to bring you there. We'll we'll get there in a minute, right? But let's yeah. talk a little bit more about the Pisces, right? Because people watching the show, some people don't know what a Pisa is. Tell the people what a Pisa is, man. Man, Pisces are just civilians trying to do their time and go home. Like, tangos were supposed to be at first, too, in Texas. When they first got started, tango was the word that meant town or city. And uh, but they started growing more and, and started getting more organized and they started becoming like a like a, they wanted to be like a blood in blood out organization like the Mexican mafia. But I mean, not really. I mean, they're still they're still doing that. Uh, you what we're here in prison, we're active and, and you choose to either be active or not whenever you come out. That's the time, that's the movement that got started in the state of Texas by Hispanics. Uh, it started after the year 1984 when they say that the building tenders got removed by the federal government. Paisas are the same thing. Like in prison, paisa is just a word that means countrymen, home, home countrymen. Like and, and here in Mexico, Spanish people, Spanish people, um, Spanish speakers in Mexico. We, we, we use that word to like say somebody from your same country, somebody, somebody that's from the same place where you're from. So let me, let me stop you for a minute, because I've I've been in prisons, right, where when I was in USP Lee, there was a dude that came there from Germany, right? He was a white dude. He was German and he ran with the Pisces. He was a Pisa. And that I mean, yeah. you guys allow people like that because he's from his motherland to be involved with you guys. When I was locked up, my speaker told me about a white dude that was a Pisa in the state prison where I was at. So, yeah, I, I know that that happens. It, Paisa is just a word that means uh, like like home country man home. It's like I try to I try to explain to people. It's like saying hometown. Hey, what's up, hometown? Or what's up, homeboy? Like somebody from from your same city. That's what the what's, that's what the word you know Paisa means. Uh, Wait, let me ask you this, right? Let, let's go to this too. Yeah. So Paisa's got beef with other groups too, right? Um, you were a young man. If a Paisa runs into a Texas syndicate, dude, what, what would happen? In Texas, in, in Texas, um, the Tango Blast would handle that quick because they got a they those are the, the number one enemy. Of course, we might have to get into as well because Texas, we are, we Listen, are riding with Tango. I'm not asking you. I'm not asking you about the Tango Blast. No, no, Blast, I, I wouldn't do shit. I wouldn't do shit to a, to a Texas syndicate uh, if he comes in where I'm at. I wouldn't shit. I, I want to do shit to nobody unless they fuck with me first. And um, yeah, Texas, I, I had, I, I mean, that's how I did my time. That's how I, I tried to do my the time. The reason I ask you that is because in federal prison, right, I went to USP yeah. Polak. And when I get to USP Polak, there's two Pisces on the bus. One's an old man and one's a younger dude, you know, like your age. And we're yeah. all in this, we're all in this cell and we're waiting to get processed, get fingerprinted and stuff. And the one Thanks, dude, on the CS. Yeah, let, let, let me tell you something. So the one dude leaves, the young dude goes out, he gets fingerprinted, he won't go back in the cage. So now the TS dudes, there's like 10 TS dudes in there. They're asking the old man, hey, what are you? And the old man gets up and he's like, he's trying to talk, whatever he gets up, he's like, Paisa! And they just, you know, they, they destroyed this dude. Honestly, I felt bad for him. He was just an old man, right? So in the federal prison system, if the Paisa's got the upper hand and they see a TS dude, they're going to try to crush him. If the TS dudes see a Paisa, they're going to try to crush him. And for me, it was just bewildering, you know, a little bit because I'm thinking, damn, this old man, he's from Mexico. These young TS dudes, he could be their grandfather, bro. And they're beating the shit out of him. Why? 
Like, what is the beef for? You know what I mean? And and we yeah. get in we get into that where Mexicans are fighting Mexicans, blacks are fighting blacks, whites are fighting whites. It's absolutely ridiculous. So I wanted you to shed some light on that, if you could. Yeah, that there's always that's in the state prison where I was at. The same thing, Mexicans against Mexicans, the Mexican mafia, Texas, and it's because they got beef. Um, you got the PRMs, TCBs. The one of the riots was between two TCBs, two gangs that both gangs that they have the same name. They they are they are both TCB. It's just that one on, of them stands for. Hold on, tell the people what TCB Mexicans is. Against Mexicans. Huh? What is TCB? People watching the show don't know that. Yeah, yeah. I was about to explain. Uh, Texas Chicano Brothers started out in in the valley in Texas in prison, and but somewhere along the line they they, they divided into two, and now the other the other TCB is represents Tri City Bombers. It's also from the valley. The three cities that are in the valley. I, I think it's McAllen, Texas, Brownsville, Texas, and Mission, Texas. Uh, I don't. I, I don't know which are the, exactly what the three cities are, but three city bombers, that's one of the gangs. And then the other TCB is Texas Chicano brothers. And they're both a Mexican gang. They were both at first, they were one. And now they, they green light each other. As soon as they see each other, they, they have to take flight on each other. When I was there, I had heard about some T TCB members using fan motors on socks with on socks on other TC TCB members that that suddenly arrived there. And uh those TCB members that took flight on the other ones, they were locked in a cell. It's just that in the prison where I was at, you could put a little cap on the door. And so when the door closed, you could just open that with like any type of the IDs that we had, we could open the doors with that. The, we would call it rigging the door. You rig the door and then whenever the officer closes and he leaves, you can open the door. So that's what they did. They put a, they, they rigged the doors. So later on, whenever the officers were away, because there was no cameras in the prison where I was at, it was all with, with the, the word of the officers, what they would say or the, you know, the investigation. So that's how they, they did it. They rigged the doors, they opened the doors, and they took flight on the other TCBs, Mexicans on Mexicans. Same thing. I, I think I'm not. I'm not. I don't think that's right. I don't agree with that. And uh, the crib, the crib that got stabbed in the face, it was because uh, this this old man, Hispanic dude, he had already done time before in another Texas prison. It's called Ferguson. It's another famous prison here in Texas. But he, his glasses were missing, so he was an old man, but he 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 had been to like he said a glad a gladiator school before, so he didn't want to, you know, uh, be punked out or whatever. So he, I guess he investigated, found out who it was. It ended up being a black dude who ran with the cribs. And um, I, I, I say he got stabbed in the face, but I guess he really got slashed because they say he had like a, like a razor blade, like a few of those, you know, when they're brand new, they're sharp. So he kind of tied those up together. And that's what he said he attacked. That's what they say he attacked them with. I was there for that, but I was in the. I was getting some extra beans on my tray. We were at the chow hall, and I seen. I heard people screaming and, and making noises. So, but I was concentrated on on getting extra beans on my tray. Uh, and so yeah, when I, I when I finally turned around, I just seen old boy with a whole bunch of blood on his face. It, it was the crib and. An, an officer stepped in in front of the in, in front of the the old man because I guess the other Crips wanted to jump on him, and but no but no at that time none of the Crip members that were there decided to jump on the officer, so they ended up coming in and they racked everybody up. Uh, but it was a rock and rolling unit. Uh, before I got there, they had told me that the blacks started a riot against the officers because they felt the officers were being too racist against them. Uh, the prison was located in West Texas. So most of the correctional officers were Hispanic. And so I guess, yeah, they, they, uh, they were kind of racist with against the blacks. So the blacks decided to, 
start a riot against them. And that happened before I, before I got there. I got there like on February, the month of February of 2012, I think. And um, yeah. And also an, ob- go an go officer ahead. had got killed before I got there too. They, they put a, they, the, I guess, cause they're the sergeants. Um, some of them, they'll try to be cool with you, especially if you're like in media, rock and roll in medium custody, building one, they'll try to be cool with y'all with, be, with us whenever you're there, whenever we're in there, because they know that um, people, the, the convicts or the inmates, they don't care in there. They'll, they'll, they'll ride on the laws. I ended up hitting an officer too, before I, I had 10 days before I discharged, but what they would do is that they would throw a blanket over the officer so that they wouldn't see who was hitting him. But unfortunately he didn't make it. They say that when he got, he went to the hospital, he passed away later on for that beating that the Tango Blast had gave to that one officer. I, 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 don't, I don't remember if they said he was a sergeant or not, or he had rank, but I just heard that he was an officer. So the moral of the story is them Texas prisons are pretty serious, right? Yes, yes. Oh, was, was there ever a time when you were in there and you were a little bit scared? Like, damn, man. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, man. When I when I was on on the ride on the bus, yes, I was scared. When I was on the bus on my way to prison, um, I was even scared to pray to God <laughs> because I was afraid that God was gonna be like. Oh, yeah, now you're trying to pray. <laughs> so I was just like, I had my adrenaline pumping. I was shitting bricks, like they say in prison. And, um, but I was like, I was trying to have a mentality to where I was supposed to, I mean, I'm, I'm ready for whatever. But I mean, when I got out the bus, I couldn't even talk. There was this female officer. She tried talking to me. She was like, get your mat and, and the sheets. <laughs> And I remember I just felt like something in, in my throat. And I seen like a whole bunch of white dudes all bald, all big, t- buff, tatted up. And, and also, before you get there, the prison, the bus passes through high security. And that's like the bad part of that prison. They, they house inmates that are super violent. So they have them in cages whenever they go to wreck. And the bus passes through there first whenever, before you get there. That prison where I was at, uh, later on I found out it's kind of built like Pelican Bay where they have a prison inside the prison. So if you, you know, catch cases and stuff, stab people, fight, you they send you to high security. And that's where you can you can no longer come out the cell except for one hour after you already completed your days of restriction. But you don't come out the cell for nothing. You, you have a cellmate. The, they bring you your food. And there's a shower there too, so you don't even come out to shower or nothing. Just and and a lot of times they have to be there for like a year before their all their cases that all their bad all their restriction days get stacked up. So you gotta wait like a long time, like ninety days before you could even come out to sell for for one hour a day. Let's, and that's high, yeah, that's high security there. I want to talk to you a little bit about your life, right? Were you born in the United States? Oh man, I was born here in Mexico. Um, I was born here in Mexico when my when I, I come from a family. Uh, my dad was broke. My my mom she she came from a she was uh, my dad and my mom they met because um I we always tell I, I haven't told the story on my YouTube channel yet, but I'm trying to tell my dad's story too because he 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 kind of worked for the cartel. He was like a hitman. He met, I'm not sure if he wants me to 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 yeah, say these things. You, I don't want you to talk about that right now, bro. I don't want you to talk about that because you are in Mexico and I don't want nothing to happen to you. But I asked you no, that. No, no, no. I, hold on now. Okay. I asked you that for a reason. How old were you when you came to the United States? I know that you were born in Mexico. I'm asking you that because I'm going to take the story somewhere. How old were you when you came to the U.S.? I was around, the first time I was like three years old, but then I came back. And I was here for a couple of years, and then I came back when I was like eight. So you're living in the United States, right? Are you going to school in Texas, elementary school? Are you, you know, you got friends? What's your life like in the U.S.? 
Yeah, man, when I first come to the United States, um, at first, I, it, for me, it was great because compared to the school in Mexico where there was no, we had, we had no lockers, no lunch, no, no. Yeah, I mean, the quality of, of education was way better. So I was excited. And um, at first we moved to, to Dallas, Texas, to the city of Dallas. And yeah, my life was, uh, at first we went to school. I mean, we did move to like a bad part. Uh, supposedly the, the little, Dallas has a lot of ghettos. And one of the ghettos that, that they have is in the north side. And they call it in Afghanistan because it's like, there's a lot of, you know, there's, it, it gets bad sometimes, but, um, the, the school where I was at, it was a good school and I learned English and yeah, I had a pretty good childhood except for, well, like I, I was talking earlier, my dad, he worked for the cartel. So he was, he was uh real violent. He would, um, like he would, he would uh, have episodes, violent episodes with my, with my mother a lot. And I remember we ended up going to a living, having to live at a homeless shelter when I was like 12 years old. So that was kind of what my life was like. But at age 13, we moved away from Dallas to go to a, the state of Arkansas. And, and over there, life was, was going to get better for us because we were away from the, from the big city. I was already catching cases at 13 where I was at, but my, my parents ended up getting arrested for a bank robbery charge that my dad, my mom had nothing to do with. It was just my dad and, and one of his friends, but, um, he ended up the, they didn't find no evidence for that bank robbery, but they still got him on seven fake IDs. And he ended up, um, he ended up doing four years. They tried to give him 15, something like that. At that, that, okay, that time he did four years and he, he got deported. But my life, when, while I was in the States, it was great because I got an education and I got, I went to elementary, junior high. And because of what I learned in elementary and junior high, I was able to, whenever I was studying GD in transfer unit prison, I was able to pass that. I was able to pass that because not only that, but also I would ask the teacher. I remember I, I would ask him for for help a lot. My, my my GD class teacher in prison, I would ask him for help. I would ask him for for fraction packets. Um, excuse me, like that way I could I, I'd be ready for my GD. And, and when and when uh, I took the test, I was able to pass it. So I'll ask you this, so, yeah. though, right? Because you're living in the U.S., you end up catching, you know, a case or whatever for a fake green card because you didn't want to go back to Mexico, right? That's why you had a fake green card? No, I was already, like, 17 when I caught that case. So, so yeah, I was already old. Like, I, I was, uh, I, I had left school. I didn't want to go to school no more. All my parents were, were in jail, in prison. I was living with my uncle. And I was just, I was like, man, for, um, yeah, I don't want to go back to Mexico. So one of my aunts, she bought a fake green car for me so I could get to work, you know. So that day we were riding around town in Garland, Texas. We got stopped by an officer and, you know, he pulled out. He asked for, he searched me. I had that little green car with me and I signed probation. So I didn't want to go back to Mexico. So. Uh, but but this is why I, I grew up in the States, so I guess that, uh, that's why I didn't want to go back. I'd never really been to Mexico before that. Like, like I, had, I grew up, I, I was eight years old when I went to the States, and then I went back after my mom got released. She got deported because they ended up finding out that she didn't really have anything to do with the bank robbery. After six months, she got deported, and that's when I came back to Mexico. But I only that's I finished... That's kind Junior of where that's where I'm going with the interview, right? So you live yeah. in the United States almost your whole life, pretty much. I mean, you're back and forth to Mexico when you're younger, but you know you got an education, you speak English, you know, you know, you know this way of life, and now you have to go back to Mexico, right? You get done with your your jail sentence and you get deported too. Yeah, um, yeah. It's kind of yeah, like what, right. what do they call that over there? La migla, la la migla, la migla, right? So yeah, hey, yeah. They, they deport you, and I'm not saying this in any disrespectful way, bro. Like I told you, I'm real close 
with a bunch of Pisces. I had a Selly that was a Pisces for over two and a half years, one of the best dudes I ever lived with in my life in prison, one of my really good friends. But I taught yeah. him, I helped him get his G. I tutored him in college. So, But now you're back in Mexico. How old are you? How old am I? I'm, I'm 30 now. 30 years old. What's life like, man, leaving the United States and having to live in Mexico? Are you working? Are you making any money? Tell people about that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, I'm, right now I'm working at a taqueria. This is a, a taco shop, making tacos. I'm working from Wednesday through Sunday. And it's it's hard. Like at first, at first it's hard because you kind of have to just learn the culture a little bit. But I grew up with Mexican parents, so I knew Spanish. I just hadn't practiced it. I hadn't practiced it that much. But I mean, there like there's job opportunities for people that can speak English. Like you just got to learn a little more about the about the vocabulary, learn how to read and write properly. And you can get a good job anywhere here in the city, in the city of Monterrey. I'm, I'm living nearby Monterrey. In the capital, they have like j applications for job applications for being able to use your English. And right now, the, the job where, that I have is not, it's not, I don't use English at all. I'm just cooking food. But that's why I'm trying to start this YouTube channel. Also to tell my experiences and share them with people and maybe if I could get monetized through here later on, I already have, I'm going on 3,000 subscribers that, you know, I hope that can help me as, as well. And if I could help people with the stories that I'm telling and and later on with the projects that we want to start, the, the Pisces down here, they're actually starting um, like this foundation called Pisces 16, where they, they give food to people. And that's what they're doing right now in Monterrey. And um, shout out to Paisa Neto. He's doing that over there. So he, I'm, I'm hoping that maybe I could, I could join in the net later on and, and, or start my own here in, in my hometown where I'm from here. And the, the city is called Linares here where, I, where I'm at. I'm hoping maybe I could start that here. And yeah, like help, help get back to the community. You know, you, you talk about there's good jobs, right? How much money do you make a week over there? I'm curious. Nah, it's a, a thousand pesos. I think it's like five hundred dollars over there. So that's you know that's not enough for for me to start like a a, a bigger channel or, or whatever. You is know? that a thousand pesos? I think it's a lot less than five hundred dollars. I might be wrong, but is that a week or is that a month? That's a week. So you're making five hundred dollars a week. That's what you're telling me in Mexico. Yeah, a thousand pesos, yeah. Okay, so you're doing all right then. You're not doing super bad, right? Yeah, I mean, it's not, I'm not like working too hard. I'm just, I'm chilling at the at the taco shop, eating tacos and chilling. Get free food? Hell yeah, three times a day. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, who do you live with there? Are you living with your mom? I mean, what's going on over there? Um, I was living with my mom when I first came out, but. Now that I'm working here at the taqueria, they've given me they they have given me a chance to rent at the place. I'm staying here in the place where they where they let me the where, where they where I work at with the people that I work at. So you got yeah. your own you got your own little place right there where you work at. No, I gotta share it. I gotta share it with other people, but but yeah, it's like I got I got my own little private area. It beats living in a prison cell, right? Yeah, yeah, man. I, I also tell that people on, on my channel, like on Texas, they don't even have no, no heat. Where I was at, the heat didn't work. They don't have no air condition. People have actually died from suff from suffocation from, you know, whatever. Like it gets too hot in, in the cells. <laughs> you mean you mean heat exhaustion, right? Yeah, I guess you're all right. Don't trip, bro. You you're all right. You're all right. So now. Let's talk yeah. a little bit more about prison before we get ready to close, right? We'll talk a little bit about your channel, too, because I do want people to support your channel. I want to see you do all right. I, I want to see you that. get monetized and be able to make a little bit of money to help support your family. And, you know, someday, hopefully, yeah. you'll be a father and a husband and have kids and, and, and be a role model, right? A positive one. Do you think prison affected yeah, yeah. you going to that prison? Did it make you say, man, I don't ever want to cross the border and go back to the U.S. ever again? Hey, yeah, it affected me that way. That's why I haven't been back. I mean, I haven't been trying to go back 
since my last time I got deported, my the federal judge told me in California, if I ever see you here again, um, you're, it's not going to be good for you. And I took his words to heart, and and especially because he only gave me forty days. My last time I tried to go back to through Arizona over there to California, I was supposed to get a year for my for illegal reentry. Because the my first illegal reentry, I got six months. So for the second one, I was supposed to get a year, and the judge gave me forty days. And he just said, he just said, I don't want to see you waste your life. On, in the, it, it's 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 real sad for you to waste your life being incarcerated. For and sure. Yeah. To, have there ever been yeah, times? For, have there ever been times when you were over there and things were hard and you thought, damn man, I might as well just go back to the U.S. I might as well try it. Uh, yeah, the, I, I, I mean, like, it, I do have those times, but now that I've been to to an actual maximum security prison, and I know that if I get locked up because of that record, I get sent straight to those places. Like, I get sent to maximum security prison. That's like the whole thing that motivates me to just keep keep uh, pushing here in Mexico, not not try to go back at all. I like hey yeah that that it makes me feel like I don't want to go back at all for I, like I rather even if at first I was like struggling a lot a lot when I first got here but nothing nothing compares like you can't compare freedom to being incarcerated in the prison cell like it's way better to be free and enjoy freedom. No I, doubt, I do agree with that. You can't listen. Living in Mexico. Yeah. Even if it's hard at times, it's a whole lot easier than being in a prison cell in a maximum security prison, right? Yeah, yeah, it beats it 100 times, 116 times. <laughs> Look, man, we're going to get ready to close the show, right? But I want to talk a little bit about your YouTube channel. What is the name of your YouTube channel? I'm calling it uh, Time is Murder, Come Kill Time. Yeah. Pisces 16, Time is Murder, Come Kill Time, Not People. We got prison stories. We got prison. Hit that like button. We got, um, you know, I try, I'm going to try to get also more people on the channel right now. You can check me out at www.youtube.com slash 16 That's the channel that right now has more, more subscribers. I can't get monetized there yet, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to start a new one. I, I still don't get a, I don't still get, I don't still don't have the URL for the, for the new one, but y'all can still um, find me there, Pisces 16, Time is Murder. I want you to um, I want you to try to put that together, man, so you know you can do a little bit better. I think it's important. Yeah, yeah I appreciate you letting me come on the show. And uh, shout out to all the Blood, in, blood on the Race of Wild TV family. Appreciate well, y'all. Well, listen, man, I appreciate you coming on, man. And look, man, keep your head up. Don't give up. Keep pushing. You know, and, and think bigger, man. You're making tacos right now. Maybe you're going to own your own taco stand. Save your money, man. Put it together. You make a little money on YouTube, save your money, man, and make your own taco stand over there and start working for yourself. You hear me? Hey, uh, yeah, I'm I'm trying to do like vegan food. I'm trying to I'm, I'm, I want I like that. Like I, I I studied that a little bit while I was in the in federal county. So, you know, I might try to do something like that. I'm trying to I'm, I might try to work with some some with that. I just want you to live your best life. Look, man, I'm going to tell everybody, man, if you like the channel, Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, share the video. This brother shared some stuff with us. Blow down the razor wire. With respect, until tomorrow, we're out.